Hey, my name is Steve Larson, and this is Sales Funnel Radio. Welcome to Sales Funnel Radio, where you'll learn marketing strategies to grow your online business using today's best internet sales funnels. And now, here's your host, Steve Larson. Hey, you guys, I am uh, actually excited to share this story with you guys. This is a personal story. Um, this is something that happened to me, and <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm looking back at it, thinking about how crazy crazy it was. So, like, I grew up in Littleton, Colorado, and I, I loved it. I mean, I had a fantastic childhood. I look back at all the crap that I did growing up, and it's just fun. Um, I had a really, really awesome childhood, and I, and I had awesome friends, and... Uh, um, grew up in a cool, a cool neighborhood with tons of other kids on the street. You know, there's like two kids in every house on our street for the longest time. So it's kind of fun because at night, I feel like, you know, everybody came out. <laughs> the street became alive, and uh, which which is good and bad um, <laughs> for various various reasons. But so uh, so growing up, I went to this this high school called Chatfield High School, right? And I, I go. And my, my brother and I were always trying to find stuff to sell to other people. I think it started because we, we grew up kind of on like on the back nine of a, of a public golf course. It wasn't like crazy nice or anything, but it was kind of cool because we'd go sneak on there, <laughs> run from the, uh, the golf rangers, and we'd have our, our backpacks on, but the top open, right? We'd have our swimsuits on, and we'd go jump in this pond with, the, you know, there's tons of them. It's a golf course. But we'd go like riding our bikes through this golf course on the paths and everything, um, or just straight down the fairway, <laughs> just collecting golf balls, right? And then we'd clean them up and we'd go sell them back to the golfers. I think that kind of started us on this, I don't know, downward spiral. <laughs> so, so one day we got out of high school, right? And um, my brother and I were, were pretty close in age. So um, we were usually in the same buildings, right? Same school buildings. And we get out and we're like, hey, let's let's go over to, there's a Walgreens nearby. So there's a Walgreens over there and, and uh, it's not far away. And it was not uncommon for us to take like huge detours before we'd go home, um, just for fun, just doing whatever. And uh, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know at that time that I would necessarily call myself book smart at all. I think I barely graduated high school, like, like literally. I know some people say that figuratively. I think I actually literally barely graduated. I had straight Ds for a very long time in all like the major, you know, the major uh, course subjects. And, um, but I guess you could say I was quote unquote, you know, street smart or whatever that is. Um, so, so we go over to this Walgreens and we're looking at this toy aisle, right? Which is the coolest aisle. You always go to the toy aisle when you're a kid, you know, even, even when you're an adult. <laughs> so I go over to the toy aisle and I'm, and we're looking in there and we're like, what, what can we like, I don't know, what, what could we get? We only had a couple bucks on us. And we started looking around. We didn't even know what we were looking for. All of a sudden, something catches our eye, right? And it's this it's this little tiny, you know, it was, it was kind of uh, shiny actually, but it's these pens, like writing pens. And they're in these awesome cases, right? And uh, like plastic cases to make them look really nice. And you guys will probably know, some of you will probably know what I'm talking about but there's two buttons on the side, right? It was a nice chrome pen, and it's like one of those twist pens. And uh, on the side, there's two buttons. Um, the top button makes this blue light come out the top. It's really kind of cool. And then the bottom button, like, shined a laser pointer out of the top of this pen, and we we're like, holy crap, that's so cool. You know, we love that stuff. And uh, so we're like, this, this is awesome. And uh, we look at the price, and you could get two of them for five dollars. We're like, what? This is ridiculous. So we each had like twenty bucks on us. We bought all the pens that I think that they had, and, um, and we're like, I think we could go sell these. So we went, we went back. We grabbed our pens. You know, there was dollars in our eyes. We were thinking all about it, and and uh, <laughs> we get back, and my mom had this labeler, and so we went and we were making these labels that are like eight dollars, twelve bucks. I mean, like huge markups from, <laughs> from what they currently were. And we marked all these things up and we, we you know, I was a big fan of cargo shorts back then for their utility and comfort. <laughs> we loaded up our cargo shirts, uh, shorts full of these pens, right? And these nice looking cases. We had taken off the original price tags, you know, for 250 and put on like 12 bucks, you know? And so we go, 
we go to school the next day <clears throat> and those were always the days I was excited to go to school. I didn't necessarily love school. Um, I liked it for all like the extracurricular stuff that was going on there, right? I was in, uh, um, <laughs> I, I was a bit of a geek for sure. I was one of the head editors for yearbook and um, um, for computer stuff, go figure. Not writing or taking pictures and stuff like that, but for layout and stuff like that. And and, and I was in like choir and theater and stuff like that, but I did awful in all the other subjects. But like the days where we were trying to take over the world, you know, and sell stuff to people, <laughs> um, th those are fun days. So we go to school and we start showing these pens in our classes, you know, we're like, hey, you know, check it out, you know, almost like we're doing a drug deal. It's kind of funny to talk about it now. <laughs> I never really thought about that, but it must have looked bad. So we're like, dude, I got this sweet pen. Do you want it, man? Because we would... It was totally the drug dealer clothes. We you know we'd we'd play with them for a second. And someone'd be like, "Oh, that's totally legit, man. Can I have that pen?" You know, and we're like, "It'll cost you twelve bucks. I don't want to lose money on it." You know, and it showed twelve dollars on the price tag. They're like, "Dude, I'll totally buy that from you." We're like, "Okay," you know. And what's crazy is at the end of that day, we had sold all of the pens in a matter of like twenty minutes individually in our classes. In one, in, you know, like one class period or whatever, and we're like, oh my gosh, we're gonna be rich. <laughs> and we went and uh, we went straight back to that Walgreens, used all the money we got, bought more pens, which I'm glad they like restocked and such, and went back, used the labeler, and the next day we were loaded up with more pens, you know, and we sold all those pens in, in like a matter of, of hours, not even <laughs> like another class period. Well, we go back and forth and we're doing this several times and we're making like crazy margins on this thing and we're like these these pens are so underpriced this is ridiculous and uh i mean we're selling these things to people for even like like 15 dollars 20 dollars and they're two and a half bucks and we were making a killing on these things and uh we just kept going back getting all this you know uh taking all the money we were making and dumping it straight back in you know, in, you know into our product and it's funny because looking back on it like people were buying from us, turning around and selling again. Like we had our own freaking distribution channels starting. <laughs> yeah, it was nuts, but it kind of got out of control. Like it got to the point where people, I don't know how they heard about, well, I guess it was pretty easy to see and hear about us. I mean, you'd walk into the commons and there's all these red dots all over the walls. Like I didn't grow up in a small high school. There's like 3000 or no, what was it? It was about 2,300 people in our, in our, in our school. And so, I mean, it wasn't small. <laughs> and we had been load, like pumping and just tons and tons of these pens in there. But like I said, it got to this point where people were like interrupting us in the middle of a class. <laughs> they seriously would open up the door in the middle of my English class and they go, uh, like the class would be going on. And they'd be like, uh, are you, are you the kid with all the pens? And I'd be like, dude, come on. Like, you're stupid, man. <laughs> Get out of here. Then I'd be like, uh, yeah. He's like, do, do you have any more of them? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh, do, uh, I'll meet you here. I'll, I'll just wait right outside when your class is over and I'll get him right there. Like, we had caused so much freaking desire for these pens. It was starting to get us in trouble. And what is funny is one day, um, like I said, you can start to see all these red dots all over the place. And one day I was sitting in algebra class, which I think I fit, well, no, I got a like a 60.1% in that class. That's just how I got in most of my classes. Math for sure. Um, English for sure, because you had to read a whole lot. Uh, Spanish, definitely got straight Ds every single semester in Spanish. Like, like mercy kills, you know what I mean? 60.1%, barely passing me so that I could move forward. I think they knew that I just wasn't a kid that was like into drugs and and had good intentions, so they just kind of grace killed me and moved me forward, you know what I mean? And so, <laughs> I was sitting in algebra, and uh, um, I, all of a sudden, uh, someone comes in and they're like, hey, uh, Steve Larson, I said, yeah. They're like, here you go, and they handed me this red card, and if you get the red card, you've been red carded, you know, kind of like soccer, if you had been red carded, man, you were busted because it meant that the the principal wanted to see you and i was like crap and so i get up and everyone's like ooh, and i was like don't worry i'll go sell them a pen too oh, 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 oh. try not to feel tough about it like totally crap in my pants though at the same time they had no idea and i was walking down this 
abnormally long hallway that day. It seemed so much longer. Oh, we had huge, you know, it was a big high school. And uh, so we walked down, I walked down, and uh, I go inside the principal's office and I sit down and my brother, turns out, had been in there for like two hours already and they had been grilling the crap out of him. <laughs> and uh, they had just been smoking his butt. And uh, um, I get in there and they're like, Hey, do you have any of these pens on you? And I was like, yeah. And they were all like pre-sales for like sixth period. You know what I mean? We we were gonna cash in like two or three hundred dollars that period. Everyone everyone wanted them, and uh, we anyway. <laughs> I was like, yes. Yeah. So I took the pens out, and I one by one was like stacking them on his desk. I still remember the grains of wood in his desk, like to this day. I'm closing my eyes, like remembering. <laughs> how dim the room was abnormally. I mean, oh, so funny. And I ended up stacking just, you know, like <laughs> this huge, huge pyramid of pens. And the look of surprise on his face was just priceless. And he was like, how much are you buying these for? I was like, or he goes, how much are you selling these things for? And I was like, anywhere from eight bucks to 12 bucks. And I started like nervous laughing. Like he was really interested, you know, act, you know, like I thought he was, he wasn't of course. Um, but I was like, uh, we're selling them for like 15 bucks. He's like, how much are you getting them for? I was like, two and a half dollars. And he was, he was like, what? <laughs> he's like, oh man. And my brother's pyramid of, of pens was already on it. I mean, our cargo shorts were bulging, you know, to the point where our, our shorts were like swaying when we walked. I mean, we were selling so many of these things every single day. And uh, he just kind of sat back and he's like, you know the principal wants to expel you. And I was like, oh, really? But like thinking about it now, I was like, what the freak? Are you kidding me? For do it for selling. <laughs> Kids can openly sell pot in the hallways, but I can't sell laser pointer pens. And, uh, and he's like, yeah, the principal wants to expel you. And he's like, you're directly violating our code of conduct. And I was like, what? And he, he pulls out. And I remember, I know, I know now, I still remember now the bottom of page six on the code of conduct book, you know, and we all sign that stupid piece of paper saying you read it, no one reads it. There's one sentence down there at the bottom that says you cannot possess laser pointers and, uh, you know, shine them, bring them in, do anything like that. And I guess what had happened is people were selling after we were selling, right? So we had all these people who were selling and the, like one you know, there was a mentally handicapped kid that ended up getting a hold of one of these laser pointers and was like shining it in everyone's eyes in the comments, things like that. And and that's that's a you know they said, hey, where'd you get that? And then they asked the next kid, hey, where'd you get that? Where'd you get that? And they just followed the breadcrumb trail straight to my brother and I. And uh, totally makes sense why you can't have laser pointers. We just had no idea. We didn't think it would you know there'd be no harm or foul in it. But what ended up happening is they're like, yeah, we want to expel you. And we're like, holy crap! Oh my gosh! You know? And and he goes. Um, I don't think we're gonna do that. He, this was the vice principal. I don't think we're gonna do that. I think that you will have a few days of suspension though. And we're like, oh, okay, like what? And so he's like, okay, go on back to your classes. And we're like, oh my gosh. And so we walk back and my brother and I were just shocked. You know, we were generally good kids. Like we weren't into drugs. We weren't doing any kind of crazy crap. Um, but we were generally good kids. We were just trying to make money. <laughs> and uh, oh man. And we walked back to our classes and we started, <clears throat> you know, everyone in the class was like, dude, what happened? Like, oh my gosh. And so we were telling it and their teachers were listening and they're like, are you kidding me? They're going to suspend you for that crap? And we ended up creating like a teacher um, army <laughs> and all these teachers started going down and fighting on our behalf. And they're like, you can't expel these kids for doing what we're freaking teaching them. You know, they're, they're doing what we're teaching. They're going out, they're trying to make money, they're hustling, they're, at, they're actually like selling stuff, you know? They're, and I think it was because of those teachers um, that, <laughs> that we didn't get even suspended. And so they brought us back in and we sat down and they're like, hey, you can't do this. And uh, they called our parents, you know, things like that. And we ended up getting off with like a couple hours of community service. We, we had to, we were punished for being entrepreneurial. And that's one of the purposes of me telling you this story is that society doesn't exactly like entrepreneurs. They know that we're necessary, but the breed of myself, because I would consider myself entrepreneurial, right? I make money online by myself and, uh, um, and a good amount of it. And uh, like people don't really know where we fit inside of society. If you listen to Alex, uh, Alex, I think it's 
Shafrin, I think that's how you say his last name, Shafrin or Sharfin, Alex Sharfin, he talks about what's called the entrepreneurial personality type. The E, um, I think he calls it EPT or whatever, but 100% I am that personality type. If you've never heard of him, like go look him up, look at his stuff. But he talks about in there how we're not really a, a, a breed or a class of person, a way of thinking of person that is very much accepted. And if if you are entrepreneurial at all, I, I want you to know that it, that's like that's okay. Just expect that people are not going to like what you're doing. They're not going to know where you fit. They're not going to know how to react to you. Oh, oh, wait a second. You're not willing to follow all the rules? Oh, that's too bad. I'm like, no, I'm not. I don't care. All right, there's no such thing as rules. All right, there's only models. All right, what's the, and I've said that before, but I really believe that. Like, What's the model for staying out of jail, right? Well, here's a list of things that you shouldn't do. What's the model for being successful? Well, here's the things you should go do. Here's the model for being, you know, a professional baseball player or basketball player. Okay, well, we all know the model it takes to get the, to where those people are. Just most of us don't have the discipline to follow through with that model, right? And it's the same thing with being an entrepreneur or anything else, all right? We had to go, we, <laughs> we got punished for that crap. That's stupid. All right, what's funny is that we ended up taking the remainder of those pens. Luckily, they gave them back to us. Um, we took them home. I think they could see that they scared us you know, to death and, uh, and weren't gonna do anything else. So we took the pens home and we ended up selling them to all the neighborhood kids anyways. Going and, and we started, we kept selling stuff. And it, I, for, for whatever reason, like it, that, that experience really opened up my eyes and I was like, oh man, like I can get something cheaper and sell it for more, right? That's the base of business. Right, I remember there was um, uh, what was I doing? There was a there was a, a somebody I was talking to, um, so later on in college, and I failed out my first semester in college too. It's funny because when you start doing this stuff, people look at you like you're a genius. Guys, I'm not a genius. I just work my butt off, and there's a model that I'm following. Right, just like Tony Robbins said, all you have to do to be successful, model those who are already successful. And that's all I'm doing. And I'm loving it, and it's been so fun, and I've been doing it for the last five years, and uh, man, it works. <laughs> so it's, it's good stuff. So uh, model what I'm doing, you know, and listen, well, you know, listen, listen carefully to what I'm doing. But um, anyways, that's that's the basis. That's the story I wanted to tell you guys is that uh, if you're finding that people aren't accepting what you're doing, like get over it. They're not going to. Okay, um, you know, it's not like. Steve Jobs was an agreeable person, you know, socially that dude was a bit of a jerk, you know. It's not like Bill Gates was a bit of an agreeable person, you know, to the rest of the world, the people who just want a nine to five job and they're fine, you know, staying in, you know, what, you know, Robert Kiyosaki calls the rat race. Those, that's not an acceptable way of life for a lot of people, you know, and, and if you're in that and you're feeling that, that's 100% okay. Right. What's cool is that, oh, I was telling that story. So in college, <laughs> I have a little bit of, I don't know if I have actual ADD. I don't think I do, but um, my, my brain gets sidetracked for sure. But so in college, I remember um, we were, we built the student run business from the ground up and we were making two or three grand a week in this company and they voted me as the CEO of it. And so like, all right, cool. So I was the CEO of it. And man, I, I ran that thing hard. It was good. We made, we made a lot of money and uh, for, for, you know, students. And it was all on campus. So we were pulling two to three grand a week from students. <laughs> and just in the middle of campus, it's just nuts, it's crazy. I'll have to tell you guys that story later, but I remember there was a, um, a girl who was just businessly naive, right? She's like, wait a second, we're gonna buy something and sell it for more? Isn't that like totally unethical? And I was like, who are you? Are you kidding? Man, you have no idea how it really works out there. It's not like business owners are making three cents every time they sell you something. No, they're trying to make as much money off you as possible. Like, stop being naive, you know? <laughs> Anyways, so if you find yourself getting punished because society's not accepting what it is that you want to do, don't worry about it. <laughs> Just get out there and keep going. Take the quote unquote punishment and it will make great stories later on when you're telling podcasts early in the morning. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Thanks for listening to Sales Funnel Radio. Please remember to subscribe and leave feedback. Want to get one of today's best internet sales funnel for free? Go to salesfunnelbroker.com slash free funnels to download your pre-built sales funnel today. 